On February 12th, 2020, a group of workers at the Young Turks came forward with a union. This Twitter page pops up out of nowhere, right? And it's TYT Union. They'd used card check, an election process in which 50%, I mean, if 50, let help, Bernie. If 50% of workers in a bargaining unit plus one sign a card saying they want to join a union, they will have a union. End of discussion. End of discussion. End of discussion. Fine. End of relationship. After nine days of silence, the company formally rejected voluntary recognition, saying they were prepared to voluntarily recognize the union, but only after a second election was conducted on terms more favorable to the company. While they wanted people to believe they were protecting the democratic will of the workers, it was in fact, as labor journalist Sarah Jones pointed out, classic union busting. Their statement was, put another way, total bullshit. What followed was a period of union busting that seemed right out of the union busting playbook. Every single tactic was a tried and true technique for disrupting solidarity, save one publicly smearing the workers' integrity, intelligence, and motivations by accusing them of being in a conspiracy with Cenk Uger's political opponent. I didn't misspeak. They accused their own workers of being part of a plot to disrupt Cenk Uger's political ambitions. What makes this unique is that most CEOs desperate to avoid a union are not talk show host politicians like Cenk Uger. So this tactic stands out and is the subject of this video. The other tactics, all documented in these four articles, none of which the company has refuted, might seem so familiar because as NLRB filings would later reveal, the Young Turks hired two anti-worker management side law and consultancy firms. Since the home of progressives is largely member funded, it stands to reason that the audience deserves to know how much they spent on union busting, if any. How much member money did TYT send to these anti-worker law firms? Do they even have a right to know? Perhaps not. Shh. Best not, best not talk about it. 18 months later, Cenk Uger described his own union busting as merely a bumpy start. Our relationship got off to a bumpy start in the beginning. Bumpy start in the beginning. He almost succeeded in denying his workers, the very people on whose time, talent, and labor his career is built, their right to collectively organize. But after a tense few months, a second election was held, and bravo, a new union was born. After 18 months of negotiation, a contract was ratified. The union was official. Congratulations to my friends and comrades. Time for coffee cake. Hi. I'm Hank. I worked at TYT as well as for the Jimmy Dore Show in various iterations over the years. I was a longtime paying member before I began working for the company in 2013. As a video editor and lizard massager, I was on the ground floor of this organizing drive. Our efforts began in early summer of 2019, away from the watchful eyes of managers, of course, eventually leading to the first in-person meeting with the IATSE representatives at my apartment one day before work. During that meeting, we felt the long, absent presence of hope and the possibility of one day being respected by our employer. Solidarity was becoming action. It was glorious. As insiders, we knew Jank wouldn't like the challenge to his power, but nobody expected the guy who built a career telling a camera he supported worker rights to reject a union. Refusing was a total surprise, but the conspiracy charges were simply beyond imagination. All right, come on, let's hop into our 2012 Prius with leather seats and travel back to the day it all hit the fan. February 21st, 2020. 
The first salvo was launched by the company account in the final sentence of their deceitful statement. The fact that IATSE has failed to respond to TYT, instead opting to issue misleading statements, suggests there are other motives at play. Other motives at play? Hmm, what could that mean? Having been laid off a month prior, and because I refused to sign the massive NDA upon which my severance was contingent, I laid out a worker's perspective. Unlike TYT, I told the truth. But I have no reach. I'm just a feeble red shirt compared to the stars of this story. Jake beams in to spread the lie at 12.15 p.m. First, he denies that they had refused voluntary recognition, which is a flat-out lie. He then points out that IATSE had endorsed Christy Smith in this race, insinuating that TYT Union was a puppet regime of the establishment forces arrayed against him. More bullshit. He adds another insinuation of conspiracy by suggesting the timing of IATSE's tweet was suspect because it occurred on the day of the California 25 candidate forum scheduled for that night. Yes, 20 years ago, I used to be a Republican. How IATSE endorsing Smith means TYT workers don't deserve a union is beyond comprehension. To outsiders though, it's enough of a foothold for the lie to find purchase. People trust him. Later during his lunch break, Jenk answers a Smith tweet armed with sarcasm. Oh look, in a totally uncoordinated way, I'm sure. Blah 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 so genuine. In case you don't speak sarcasm, he's suggesting Ayatsi was coordinating with his political rival because his political rival pointed out her political rival's union busting. Look, Smith is as much a corrupt corporate demon as the rest of them, but of course she would try to capitalize on an opponent's own goal. She'd be a fool not to, and she owes Jank a big thank you card for the gift of becoming a hypocrite union buster. At 12.54 p.m., Anna enters the fray, saying she felt extremely uncomfortable with Ayatsi endorsing Smith. Three minutes later, in a tweet that is shockingly not deleted, she questions the motives of the union and plants the dagger of suspicion. While I'm personally supportive of unions, uh-oh, that's not a good start. This feels like it's done in bad faith. She finishes by calling the situation extremely suspicious. Bad faith? Suspicious? Huh? What? Okay, we, we, what? Later that night during the candidate forum, she goes after Ayatsi three times for endorsing Smith. Had workers at her company, the very people on whose time, talent, and labor her career is built, not been attempting to join Ayatsi, it's unlikely she would have targeted Ayatsi during the forum. They were in her sights because she was on Team Jank. She then tweeted erroneous information about the union claiming to represent a majority of workers, which was not at all true. Producers were not in the bargaining unit, nor were hosts. Although, unionizing the rest of the Young Turks staff is a great idea since everyone deserves a voice in their workplace, especially when the boss is a known union buster. As a worker, Anna's had personal experience with how scary asking for a raise can be. I don't like freaking asking for raises or negotiating. That's why I have an agent. Mm -hmm. My agent negotiates that stuff for me because I can't do it, mm -hmm. right? So- Well, it's an uncomfortable process for every- the worst. She's right. It is the worst. Since very few have a private union, uh, um, I mean, an agent, a company-wide union would elevate everyone out of the intimidating subjugation Anna's agent helps her avoid. Doesn't everyone deserve better? Or at least not the worst? Unionize TYT, make videos out of it, be proud, be honest, teach, and inspire others to do the same at their workplaces. And don't worry, hungry capitalists, socialist content is a proven moneymaker. 
Just ask the himbo-in-chief himself, the internet's top stream boy, where no take is too hot, no shoulders too big, no foe too paw, the socialist with the most list, TYT's former head of the nepotism department, Haas Russert. Haas, by TYT, make it a co-op. By TYT, make it a co-op. This is you talking from your dreams. By TYT, make it a co-op. This is you talking from your dreams. Haas, by TYT, make it a co-op. You're dreaming, Haas. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Lead the charge, Anna. And hit me up. I'll bring coffee cake. The following Monday, the company posted a 10-tweet screed hyper-focused on IATSE. It starts with the carefully worded and probably expensive deception that you've already seen, saying TYT voluntarily agreed to recognize the union. It's the same BS from their first message in which they offered and were prepared, but this time they say they agreed, all indicating that it hasn't happened. For those in the back, being prepared to do something is not the same as doing something. This misleading language is designed to obscure the fact that they had refused voluntary recognition. Actual voluntary recognition marks the start of the negotiation phase, but TYT refused to negotiate because they refused to recognize, insisting instead on a new election at a later date, buying themselves time during which management would employ the array of coercive and deceptive union busting techniques. Delay is an extremely common union busting tactic. This guy here, Martin J. Levitt, he was a professional union buster for 30 years, but his conscience finally caught up to him for all the damage he did. Everything. Uh, delay was one of my favorite tactics. It wears you down, it frustrates you. It lays the climate for the divisiveness. It frustrates people. It's, well, you know, what good is our union? You know, we've been trying to accomplish this for two years now and nothing's happened. It gives the employee relations function of the company the, the tools that they need to sell themselves as the real solution for the pilots or for the union members as opposed to the union. The thread paints TYT as IASI's victim and finishes with a blast of paranoid nonsense, suggesting that not agreeing to TYT's demands would be proof that no employee supported the union and that the whole thing was actually a ploy to intimidate us and the people who work at TYT. <sighs> Arnold? Come on, don't bullshit me. With over a million followers among these three accounts, the company narrative was out of the barn. Confusion and suspicion spread like tater tots in a food fight. While no shortage of randos made the mistake of trusting Jank, so too did those with platforms of their own. A few examples from the Young Turks cinematic universe stood out. Jeff Waldorf of Waldorf Nation expressed suspicion and understandable confusion. The Humanist reports Mike Figueredo withdrew his support for TYT Union when the conspiracy reached him. He's against cahoots, so much so he stayed on management side even after a worker from the very union he was talking about showed up in his mentions. Fair enough. Trusting a boss you know over a worker you don't is an understandable bias, especially when there's money and ambition on the line. Hey, I'm human too. When the eclectic radical added some clear thinking perspective, including the right wing nature of busting a union. I used to be a Republican. Mike remained where he was most comfortable. Sahil Habibi is the progressive voice. It's progressive voice. He's the TMZ of political punditry. Who's the TMZ of political punditry? Anna loves him. I love him. She loves his show. And I love his show. The Harvey Levin of political punditry tweeted, Poor Jank got snaked by his employees. And in a video titled TYT's Jank Uger recognizes TYT union after air quote union busting controversy, he follows Jank and Anna's lead in trashing the workers. Those employees, those 15 employees, man, y'all suck, dude. I don't know what to tell you. You guys are terrible, man. <laughs> I mean, thanks for, thanks for laying out all this damage for your, your quest for, I don't know what you're puffing, puffing up of whatever. Well, it's clear he actually has some really great political instincts. You actually have some really great political instincts. 
On the right, Jenks' hypocrisy was gleefully slobbered over by not-at-all-insecure cigar daddies Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder, among others, but voices on the left were mostly silent, due in part to COVID ramping up, the chaos of news in general, and TYT's misinformation campaign. With the incorrect story flying everywhere, the truth was obscured and the audience successfully misled, so it's understandable why left-leaning outlets shied away. Plus that whole don't ruin your chance of going on TYT thing. Only Means TV reported on the issue. Two charges were filed with the National Labor Relations Board this week related to the Young Turks unionizing effort. The charges were brought by the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees. So the network is charged with unlawful terminations and punishing concerted activity. Chank, just recognize the union dummy. Besides the near silence from TYT hosts and from company founders and executives, there's been no support from TYT legend Ben Mankiewicz or from politicians Nina Turner and Michael Schur, both hosts and regular chum chums of TYT. Are they as cool with union busting as their silence suggests? Speaking of cowardly silence, back here in 2022, this notice from the NLRB informing workers of their rights showed up in my mailbox as part of a settlement agreement related to the firing of a worker from the bargaining unit. They're required to physically mail former employees, email current employees, and post this in a prominent location for 60 days. A released document from a FOIA request indicates it was placed on the wall-facing kitchen and water cooler. As a daily Kitchet user, I can assure you that's a heavily trafficked spot. Only marijuana would have missed it. Look close. That last one? It quotes management's rule that concerns be brought directly to management rather than via Slack or emails that get sent to broad audiences. They were worried the truth would get out and use the leverage they have over workers to keep the audience in the dark. Secrecy favors the powerful. For 60 days, evidence that a prominent progressive CEO violated labor laws sat on the wall by the coffee machine and nary a peep from any of the journalists or hosts at TYT. Themselves literally on the other side of that wall telling a camera about employers who abuse workers and violate labor laws. Ethics be damned. To say nothing of the broad audience, it seems like something the paying members of TYT deserve to know, doesn't it? Do they even have a right? Perhaps not. Shh. Hide the truth. It's just, it's, it's just easier. Look, we, uh, we've been covering a lot of these actions and we know that these corporations, including some that like to pretend that they, they're just in this for the best interest of the workers, will use many tactics, legal and illegal, uh, to strike back against them. Ooh, careful, buddy. The boss might be listening. A few weeks after the notice was taken down, Anna expresses frustration at the lack of labor reporting on mainstream outlets. Every day, there's so much of this labor activity, whether it's strikes, whether it's efforts to unionize, they get no airtime in corporate media, zero, zero, zero. MSNBC, radio silence. Obviously, Fox News is not gonna cover it. CNN doesn't cover it. Network News doesn't cover it. They just don't care. To quote my hero. Cool. No, not him, him. Cool party. <laughs> this was May of 2022. But hold up, we're missing some critical context about who calls the shots at TYT. For that, let's travel back over two years to the very beginning of Jenks campaign, mid-November 2019. We're talking ethics. <laughs> Since very few politicians are also daily talk show hosts, Jenks' surprise run for Congress raised legitimate concerns. Something that's important to me is our cr credibility here at the Young Turks as a media company. Jenk assures the audience he's going above and beyond. Uh, when I'm a host on the program, I can't comment on my district or my race. It, not only, uh, look, actually, 
Legally, you can, but I don't want to. And I, I don't want you to either, because that's I right. think it's important for us to, uh, you know, maintain our credibility and to, you know, remain objective when it comes to reporting the facts. Hundred percent right. So who decides what airs? I handed off editorial control to show to Anna. She already was the executive producer of the Young Turks, so in that sense, we were already ninety percent of the way there. But also uh, Judith, who's a, a wonderful head of programming for us. Uh, now has editorial control over other uh, parts of the network that are not the Young Turks. Hey, you gotta do the right thing. We've gotta do the right thing. Even if you don't have to. Even if we don't have to, we should do the right thing, and we're going to. Anna assumes her new role with trademark self-assurance. I have full editorial control on this program now. Uh, there's obviously a, a, a conflict of interest if Jake had any editorial control, and he does not. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask you a question that's probably gonna make you incredibly uncomfortable. A month later, Jenk goes on the Useful Idiots podcast with Katie Halper and Matt Taibbi. At the time, fellow media titan turned politician Michael Bloomberg had been criticized for his policy forbidding Bloomberg reporters from covering their boss's campaign. Asked about his approach to similar ethical issues, Jank adopts a contrasting tack. And I've given over editorial control to Anna for the flagship show, The Young Turks, for the TYT network. Uh, and and we've told our reporters, you are allowed to cover the campaign uh, and you're definitely allowed to cover it negatively. Negatively? Well, gosh, that sounds ethical. So you cover it any way you like. I mean, I'm super proud of our very, very independent strong-minded uh, reporters at TYT Investigates that have broken some wonderful stories. So they're free to investigate anyone they like. So unlike Mike, Mike Bloomberg, if one of your people decided to just sort of kick you in the balls uh, at, at the Young Turks, that'd be fine. That'd be fine, right? They're allowed to Absolutely. do that? Okay. Yeah. He, he welcomes their ball kicks. Yeah. I'm not sure that I'm looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. They're, right. they're, they're pretty tough on folks. So, right. uh, but yes, uh, we're... Uh, independent media, so no holds barred. No holds barred, huh? Well, over three years later, there has been zero coverage of Jenks union busting, no correction of the conspiracy lie, nor any mention of the NLRB cases on any TYT show or outlet. Nothing. Zip. Bup kiss. Almost. The only content addressing it was Jank's duplicitous ratification announcement video and a press release to accompany it written by TYT. That's it. Clearly, some holds were barred. At TYT, the journalistic integrity of the hosts and reporters seems nowhere to be found when it comes to reporting on a story that would make the boss uncomfortable. Silence! And I get it. Compromising your own ethics is simply less stressful than facing the wrath of an all-powerful employer, particularly if the story about said boss is retaliation against a worker for challenging his power. Trashing your credibility to protect the boss's feelings is a perfect example of the subjugation inherent in the top-down model of employment that dominates our system, the one Jank celebrates and defends. Then I'll go, I'll see you later. Okay, all right, see you guys. Yeah. Capitalism rocks. You see, this is he's trying to make months down. Bosses fight unions because unions are an outbreak of democracy and workplaces are dictatorships enforced with intimidation and coercion. Remember, TYT's union busting campaign, all union busting campaigns really, wasn't just directed at those in the bargaining unit. It was a message to the entire company, a warning. Stay in line. Know your role. Keep quiet. So far, it's worked. And without the protection of collective bargaining, it's going to keep working. You need a union. Hank's right. We need a union. Let's not do this on Slack. You're right. I'm right. Organize your workplace and you might just restore your shattered credibility. Workers of the world. Unite! You have nothing to lose but your chains. What's happened to you? And hey, perhaps an honest accounting of what happened would clear Jake. Maybe there's a reasonable explanation for why firing somebody who was union organizing the morning after the boss's election loss was appropriate. 
If he was in the right, you'd think he'd want the story told, wouldn't you? But even that shouldn't matter. They should tell the truth no matter what. The Young Turks claims its trademark is honesty. Our trademark is honesty. Is that true? Or is that simply more... Bullshit. Besides insulting his workers, Jenks lie proves he doesn't think much of his audience either, as a moment's thought reveals how illogical the conspiracy theory is. Okay, if you look at this a little closer, their insinuation suggests two potential derivations. One, we were in on it. We were complicit with Christy Smith and the Democratic establishment in trying to disrupt our boss's election chances. That's ridiculous. Two, we weren't in on it, but we were duped. We were tricked by the Democratic establishment and Jenks' rival, Christy Smith, into forming a union at our workplace in order to disrupt the boss's political campaign. Equally absurd. There's a third explanation that you probably already figured out that I'm gonna tell you in a little while. Hank, you say you wanna say something? Yeah, thanks, Hank. So let's break the logic down here a little bit. This conspiracy theory is premised on the idea that the only reason the union formed was as a response to Jenk running for Congress, suggesting that had he not run for Congress, there never would have been a union at the Young Turks. That's absurd. We started talking amongst ourselves in secret in early summer of 2019. And had he never run for Congress, we still would have wanted to have a union. Definitely. Good point, Hank. Second, even more ridiculous, this conspiracy is premised on the idea that he would have rejected the union. Jenk spent 20 years telling a camera how important it is for workers to stand up for themselves, how CEOs screw over their employees, and how corporate culture is rotting society. He's communicated to his audience the importance of workers having unions. The Young Turks is called the home of progressives. So in order for this conspiracy, for this plot to work, you would have to have confidence that the pro-union guy would say no to a union in the middle of running for Congress. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. During our discussions, we never considered the possibility that they would reject the union. If anything, it would have been a gift to his campaign. Nice point, Hank. He could have told the people of California 25 and his audience that he's a man of his word and a man who lives his principles and that he would govern like that as a Congress boss. Hank, you said you had something? Yeah, I got something. By the way, good job, Hank. Oh, thanks, Hank. After all was said and done, Jenk came in fourth place in the election. He got 6.6% of the vote. So even if he had run on his principles and embraced the union, it might have bumped his election results up to seven, maybe as high as 8%. In hindsight, I bet he wishes he had never run for Congress. Hank? 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 What? Hank? Hey, that guy made some good points. Just a sec, we'll check the plans of the museum. The day after Jenks' emasculating loss, he joins Anna to debrief the audience on just what the heck happened. But don't worry. Like, this is not like one of those cheesy, like, here with us now is congressional candidate for California's 25th district, Jenk Uger. Thank you for joining us, Jenk. Uh, why are you saying we did that before? Joining me now is candidate for California's 25th district congressional seat, Jenk Uger. Welcome, Anna. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm welcome to you. That's right. <laughs> He's a guest on this show. All right. Joining us now is congressional candidate for California's 25th district, Jenk Uger. Hey, Anna. How you doing? Hey, Jake. What's up? Uh, lots of good stuff. <laughs> Joining us now is congressional candidate for California's 25th district, Jenk Uger. Jenk, welcome back. All right. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right. A congressional candidate for California's 25th district, Jenk Uger. Jenk, welcome back on the show. Thank you. So, yeah, because we had to <laughs> legally. Um, but anyway. Yes. Okay. <laughs> they did it for legal reasons. Is he a church? 
liberated from the constraints of Jenk's campaign. Anna grows frustrated with Jenk's lack of anger at Christy Smith. Yeah, look, Anna, so if anyone should hold a grudge, it's me on the very- but you don't, you don't, you don't. I don't understand you, and like, I'm actually getting angry right now just <laughs> thinking about it. Like, Jank is so insanely and unbelievably nice. Three minutes earlier- And I told my supporters to support her. So, first, let's talk about that, okay? Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on, okay? So, now, whenever you do this, you get criticism from both sides, including Casper, apparently. Uh, oh, my God. His reasoning is she'd be better than the Republican alternative, which is true. In any previous year, I might have agreed with you, but... She knows too much. Knowing what I know about Christy Smith, knowing about the dirty games that she played, knowing about the acts of intimidation she engaged in to try to get you to drop out of that race. Anna remains unpersuaded. I don't, I don't think that's a hard question at all. Okay. Okay. I, I... It's lead pipe and blowtorch time. She will uh, serve as one of Nancy Pelosi's puppets. If she, she better be careful, though. Any missteps, Christy, you better be a good girl. Nancy Pelosi will definitely stab you in the back, so you better be a good girl and a nice little puppet for the establishment, okay? No, I, I'm not telling anyone to vote for anyone in that race. Disgusting. Okay. Moving on. All right, now let's move on, apparently. <laughs> She's a terrible person. Um, it's not just about what she represents as a politician. Knowing what I know about her firsthand and the disgusting political games that she engaged in to try to destroy you and to try to intimidate people here at this place of work. Yeah. Intimidate people here at this place of work. That's almost the same as the official company line, so it's safe to assume she's referring to the union drive they told their audience came from Nancy Pelosi. But there were other instances that may be fueling her umbrage. In late January, Jank recounted that he and his wife's cars had been broken into on the same night, a week after he noticed someone with a camera following him. And I turn around and I see him, he dives into a store. I'm like, okay, that's a little extra weird, whatever. He came out of the store and was taking a picture of my car, and then he dives back into the store. I'm like, okay, that's super weird behavior, but no big deal at all. About a week later, my car's broken into. They didn't take my CDs. No one listens to CDs. They didn't take my raggedy jackets and shirts. The quarters are still there. And then my wife calls me, she said, last night, this was the next day, my car was broken into. Like, babes, did they take anything? No, they didn't take anything. They just rifled through the glove compartment. Jeez. Didn't happen to a single neighbor, okay? Maybe they want information on you. Maybe they're looking for a key to the house. Maybe they're just looking to intimidate you. Then they come by the office. They start, it appear to be taking videos of not only the office itself, but they start following our staffers around and taking videos of them. So it's the year 2020 and we still have this kind of thuggish behavior. But the establishment's like, bravo, let's give her more money. I don't, look, I don't know who's doing the break-in. I have no idea who did the break-in, but it is a curious, curious coincidence. Hmm, curious indeed. In mid-December, Anna had her own encounter. So let's go ahead and try to intimidate Anna mm -hmm. into accusing, by, by accusing her of trying to dox people. So for context, bad faith smears had been launched at her famous CEO friend during his political campaign, surprising no one. They're gonna fight you. Oh, okay. Jank least of all. Come and see, get some. Okay, I'm not in danger, I am the danger. They're gonna hate him, haha. -ha. They're gonna hate me. <laughs> and I welcome it. Anticipating the attacks, Jank outplays his opponents by addressing two of his vulnerabilities right away. The Armenian genocide happened. What was in those old blogs and uh, why you apologized. Ha! Try and set the narrative now, opponents. Now Oppo Research going crazy trying to find, did he say the wrong word here? Did he say the wrong word there? And he already had a major assist from Congressman Ro Khanna. So, absolute hero. Plus, the audience turned up with open wallets. 1,650 contributions, and we have 240 volunteers, and it hasn't been an hour yet. What now? The plan was working. <laughs> and so I hope you'll have me back on, and I'm not kidding. A few days later, on November 19th, The Hollywood Reporter hinted at the upcoming carnage. Past remarks from Cenk's youth would surely be brought to light. Many already were, but hey bro, no big. This wasn't the first time Cenk's words would land him in the hot seat. In 2017, he was booted from the Justice Democrats Political Action Committee, a group he helped found. He apologized. 
John Cusack from the iconic teen romp One Crazy Summer was there to push back. I've known Jane for years. He's always been a principled progressive advocating for social, racial, and environmental justice, actor John Cusack tells THR in an email. The battle had been joined. Over the next few weeks, Nancy Pelosi would let slip the dogs of war upon the genocide denier turned genocide acceptor. Undeterred, Jenk forged ahead, buoyed by the support of the TYT Army and an assembly of loyal allies. Nina Turner joined Ro Khanna, both national co-chairs of the Bernie Sanders campaign, in endorsing him. Then, on December 12th, Jenk proudly announced he scored a huge endorsement from then-presidential candidate and legendary hoopster, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders endorsed me. Senator and presidential candidate Bernie Sanders is now retracting his endorsement of California congressional candidate Jenk Uger. Joining us now in studio, congressional candidate for California's 25th district, uh, it's it's Jenk Uger. Yes. Okay, I think I did that right. You are yes. the co-chair of the Bernie Sanders campaign. Yes. He made a controversial endorsement for someone who's running for Katie Hill's seat in California, for Chank Weger. Bernie Sanders endorsed yesterday. The 2020 presidential candidate from Vermont. He is an absolute legend. Received immediate blowback. Immediately there's blowback, of course. I mean, we're talking about really gross things. Establishment media is attacking 100%. This is the LA Times reported on quite a list of this. Over Uyghurs past homophobic. Several shocking and, and sexist comments. And misogynistic blog posts. And giving a totally skewed perspective of who I am. Rating women on a scale of 1 to 10 as to whether men should allow them to perform oral sex on them. If you read any mainstream media articles, you might think like, who is this guy? Uger is a liberal media commentator. That was in uh, 2013. And what right-wing uh, channel is he on? The host of the web show, The Young Turks. In 2016. And how do I fight this guy, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? This, this isn't just, I mean, this isn't ancient history, it's recent. HuffPost, Mediaite, Inquisitor, mm -hmm. uh, The Hill, all good pieces that give you proper context, right? What is your response to Bernie Sanders endorsing this person? On the other hand, the bigger the outlets, uh, CNN uh, more than anyone else, has written complete attack pieces. Jen Cougar has made some unconscionable comments. They control the entire Democratic Party in California. My understanding is that he has apologized for them. They obviously have a backroom deal. He has said that they were clearly inappropriate. Jenks for Medicare for All and Christie isn't. Many of them were disgusting. And Pelosi isn't and Feinstein isn't. And he should apologize for them and he has. And they're, none of them are for Green New Deal and Jenk is. Jenk uh, is running on a progressive platform and has made it clear that he made mistakes and made horrendous comments that he shouldn't have. I'm arguably the favorite now. Well, there are a lot of uh, progressives uh, who have supported Jen Cougar. Bernie Sanders is one of the front runners that could potentially be the next president. Um, it seems like that would generate a lot of pov positive press. I mean, imagine if- <laughs> That's a good I, one. The important thing is for him to unequivocally, clearly uh, condemn any of those past statements and say that they were wrong and that uh, he has moved on and understood why they were wrong. He is running for the congressional seat recently vacated by Katie Hill. Is this not the race that you want to have, making it very clear where the lines are drawn? It 100% is. <sighs> As the day wore on, pressure mounted as more of Jenk's past statements came to light, thanks to a steady drip of clips that had been circulating on Twitter since Jenk announced. Apologizing might not be enough. Unable to withstand the onslaught, Jenk takes action, once again outmaneuvering his foes by rejecting all endorsements except votes from the good people of California 25. Uger says he will now not accept any endorsements. Sorry folks, no more rides on the Jenk train. Shut down. Mm -hmm. 
Outlet after outlet signal boosted the Sanders turnaround. Many sourcing examples of Jenks' controversial remarks from that troublesome big ass Twitter thread. They are going through 13 years of video that TYT has produced. The LA Times piece confirmed the person releasing the video snippets was a Democratic activist, but one unaffiliated with any presidential campaign, it says there. They're cherry picking and taking uh, things out of context in order to make it appear as though uh, Jank is supportive of all sorts of disgusting and egregious things. Out of context or not, there's simply no way such high caliber ammo would stay on the shelf if available. And there was a lot available. Smith herself dove into the melee, pummeling Jank, declaring him further disqualified, invoking faith, wresting the term progressive from his clutch, then finishing with a killer four combo. Old clips plus establishment malice backed the TYT brain trust into a corner. We're now put in this position where we literally have no choice but to respond to the smears that are being put out there by the establishment, plain and simple. We've returned to intimidation. Anna's tweet inquiring as to the identity of the person posting the clips provoked bad faith accusations of attempted doxing. Because it would look real bad if we find out that this person is actually associated with a campaign or is part of the DNC. Or an industry or, or a lobby or, group exactly. or something. It would, that would be a real problem. So let's go ahead and try to intimidate Anna mm -hmm. into accusing, by, by accusing her of trying to dox people. Simply identifying a name that goes along with a social media account, that is not doxing a person. Yeah. The siege was underway. But this is how far Christy Smith the establishment media and the Democratic establishment will go to smear Jenk. Most notably, the New York Times did their part by twisting Jenk's interview with David Duke, which roiled up the ethical dark web. This is the one that's really the most offensive. The most egregious example. The New York Times published a verifiable lie. The hit piece about Jenk Uger. Titled Bernie Sanders retracts endorsement of Jenk Uger after criticism by Jennifer Medina that is uh, getting blasted by progressives. In all seriousness, this is credibility ruining for them. They're smearing Jank Uger. The smears against Jank have uh, amplified. But there are some smears. And the amount of misinformation in this is incredible. They know they are reprinting a smear. Didn't you see what they did to Jank? Jank Uger from the Young Turks? This is so above and beyond wrong. He was interviewing uh, David Duke, and he goes, of course you're not a racist, he's, he's mocking him. That it appears malicious. And they took it out of context, in quotes. And it appears like they don't care that they're getting something incredibly. And they wrote that he said to David Duke, of course you're not a racist. Mind-numbingly. <laughs> they try to pretend. Stupefyingly wrong. It's a clip on Twitter. Mr. Duke ends an interview by saying, quote, I am not what you call a racist, end quote, to which Mr. Yuga replies, no. Of course not. All right. Has Jennifer and Medina ever even heard of sarcasm? They will link to the argue that bestiality should be legal, but somehow they couldn't find the David Duke interview. Absolutely no sense. And I'm going to show you proof that they are lying here. This is an actual smear, this is a lie. All of this here is painted in a way to make Jenk sound terrible. Kyle Kalinske, okay. Kyle Kalinske. We didn't link to it. We, as the New York Times. Kyle links to this video where it just shows, you know, Jenk like just shutting down David Duke completely. It was incredibly combative. He was basically clowning on David Duke. He's now like literally mocking him. So obviously he was being sarcastic. Jenk kicked David Duke's ass. He was rude to David Duke. Over 900,000 views. Jenk Uger just utterly destroyed David Duke. It's just, it's unbelievable. That's crazy. That's a crazy lie, though, for that to get into the New York Times. Even though we linked to the uh, clip about bestiality. Somebody just got too woke for their own good. <laughs> Somebody got overwoke. They lied. 
It's unbelievable. They crossed the line. They wanted to stop him. They wanted to stop him. Again, it's a hit job. It's just a complete lie. Shameful. You have to retract and you have to apologize. Uh, time for immediate retraction and apology now. You must retract and apologize. Yes. This is unacceptable. He says, time for immediate retraction and apology. Weird, you haven't said anything yet. And she needs to be fired. Are you kidding me? If I ever got something that wrong, I would immediately come out and be like, but I expect the New York Times to have the utmost journalistic, uh, you know, integrity. We don't have computers. Look, here's the thing. All around, this situation is demoralizing and depressing. On the bestiality front, Reeling from the day's bedlam, Jenk seeks refuge in the harbor of a trusted friend. We have a special guest with us. Uh, he's a candidate running for Congress in California's 25th district. Can you believe it? It's Jenk Uger. Hey, Jenk Uger, how are you? Good. How you doing, Jimmy Dore? I'm great. It's good to see you. <laughs> You just watched the first 46 minutes of Tell the Truth Jank Part 1. Another half hour is ready and drops in a month. With your support, the full version will release this summer and will include another 20 to 30 minutes or so. It's researched and outlined, but still needs to be edited and there's just a crap ton of work to do for that. Please see the description for more information about this project, where to get updates, and what you can do to help. This is over two and a half years in the making now that I'm shifting from the secret phase to the public phase, it's a group project now. I need your help. Like, subscribe, comment, smash bells, do all that shit, and please donate. I financed this with a workers' comp payout for my injured wrists and debt to my roommate. I'm super broke, and my computer is on its last legs. Plus, I might need a lawyer, you know? But most importantly, spread the word. I'm terrible at promotion, so I'm counting on you to rally to my side and help others learn the story Jenk tried to hide. He definitely doesn't want you or his audience to know why we started the union. I can promise you. And that's exactly why I'm telling it. And this is terrifying, honestly. I have no idea where this might go once it's loose. And it'll make me even more unemployable than I already am. So please help me out. And I'd like to make more films or videos or whatever we're calling them these days on happier topics like the apocalypse and entropy and stuff. So stay tuned. There'll be clips, teasers, probably an article or two. I'm hoping people have questions that could drive some of the conversation, and I'll probably incorporate some of the feedback I get into the, the upcoming parts of this whole project, which is kind of fun. And of course, I'll be talking about it on my podcast. So please check that out. Stay tuned. Ah, God, I already said stay tuned. Damn, that's so stupid, 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 stupid. <laughs>